Hello, and welcome to the People Chronicles Storied Women. I'm Anna Rose, and today my guest is Patricia Solis. Hello. Hello. And today, Patricia's going to tell us a little bit about herself, because as we know, each of us women, um, we have a story to tell, you know, and Patricia's is very, very enlightening. Um, mm-hmm. I have to admit that the first time I, I met Patricia, Trish, can I call you mm-hmm. Trish? Yes. Okay. The first time I met Trish, she was doing my makeup uh, for Berks County Living Magazine, and yes. you do that quite often, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so today, she didn't do my makeup. So <laughs> let's skip to that, and then we're going to <laughs> say, hello, Patricia. Welcome. How are Thank you doing, you. Trish? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. So just a little background. What is it that you do for a living at this point in time? Right now, I am, I am a licensed esthetician and makeup artist. So I've been doing makeup, and now I'm doing skincare. Oh, Oh, I got to get to the second level of that. I only yeah. had the makeup version. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, every time we have a People Chronicles and Storied Women, we ask the same question, one question, and that is, what is it? Do you? Th- what is it you want people who are watching or listening uh, to to our our chat today? What is it that you want them to take away from our little chat? Well, I I want everybody to know that we can all overcome adversity and our own struggles um that's basically it yeah i think that um life is a journey and we're always learning and i don't know my mom says i'm 58 and i'm still learning and i'm like okay well i thought that was going to quit at some point but we're always learning and um we can all become better people even if we don't choose our past Ah, yeah. It's a good point. It's a good mm-hmm. point. So your mom, in my eyes, is a child as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a really good thing. So tell us a little bit about, because I think the woman that you are today is very much built on where you come from or- originally. And it, although some people may or may not be able to relate to it, I think it's a, it's a very enlightening story. Could you share that? Sure. Um, my parents were divorced and uh, at a very young age. So I was between parents a lot. You know, my mom was from New York. My dad was from Puerto Rico and you couldn't get him out of the island. He's like one of those palm trees that wants to stay <laughs> in the island. So I was always back and forth, a lot of back and forth. Um, when I finally learned Spanish, then I was back in the United States and I had to go to ESL classes. So it was a, it was a lot of change in my life. Um, and I think that a lot of that, you know, was confusing for me as a child because I didn't know where I was going to be. Um, I had my daughter at a very young age. I have two daughters. Okay, so how old were you when you had your first daughter? I was 16 only. Wow. And so uh, w- which back and forth were you? Were you in the States or were you in Puerto Rico? I was in Puerto Rico at this point. Um, I had not seen my mom. My, the last time I saw my mom, I was 14. So there was a gap between when I saw my mother again. I was 14. I didn't see my mom again until I was 25. By then, my daughter is a toddler. Um, I had, like I said, had my daughter when I was 16. I didn't even know. I didn't know what I was doing, but I, but because of my upbringing and this continue back and forth, I knew that I wanted to be stable for my child. Okay. So, so you, yeah. Okay. So th- I think that's a good point is it? so that that stability that you say that you didn't have now, all of a sudden you're smart enough to realize that this child needs that stability. Yes. And it wasn't about me anymore. And even though I was a child myself, I was forced to grow up and it kind of, you know, it it was another learning curve for me. My mom wasn't around, so I didn't really have that female support to ask, like, especially when I was pregnant, all these changes I was going through, I didn't know who to ask, you know. So you went through your whole pregnancy alone? Yes. What about the the baby's daddy? He he came around again when, once she was born. When she was born, he was kind of transitioning also into, because this happened while I was in Puerto Rico. Now I'm four months pregnant and I moved to the United States because I have uh, my childhood best friend and her mom that said, come over here, we're going to help you. Oh, great. So, and so I had that help all of a sudden, you know, because I was lost. I didn't know what, you know, what I was supposed to do. 
Yeah, sure. Um, I, you know, then here I find out, oh, you got to have an ultrasound and you have to do all this stuff and you have to check that you're, you know. So they helped me through that stage in my life. Okay, so you get through that, and mm-hmm. uh, so you get this, finally you get support, somebody who's stable. Yes. And they help you through it, and you have the baby. Mm-hmm. And so now you're 17. Now I'm 17. Okay. I'm going to high school, and I'm an outsider. I am going to Conestoga Valley School District, and I'm one of the rare um, teenagers with a child. Sure. So this, because this is over 20 years ago. Yes. My daughter's 20 now. Um, so I went through, you know, I didn't have the support I needed and I really wanted to finish school. So it came to the point where I ended up withdrawing from school because I couldn't go to McCaskey because I lived in that, that time I lived in Burdenhand, Pennsylvania. So what I ended up is I ended up withdrawing from school and I found this great program in Lancaster that was, that it's still, it's still um, going today and they're called new choices new options they basically help you with career counseling and there I found the director became my mentor ah. so she supported me and I went through the program which helps single moms displace homes they kind of do this career counseling and then they have some grants available for you to go to schools and whatnot so I went through the program and she says Trish why don't you go Go to McCaskey and go take your GED test. Just go do it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I have to study. I, you know, because I always want to be prepared for stuff. But sometimes, you know, you're not, you know. And, and I said, okay, I'll go. And she says, at least you know where you need to build up from, what you need to do better, or which areas you need to focus on. So I went and I took my GED and I passed the whole thing. So then, you know, it's congratulations. Yeah, That's a tough I test I heard. Yeah, I, I did. And then okay, so now you have your GED. You are still under the age of twenty. Yes. Okay. And so then you find employment. Do you find employment? I go through um, through the grants that I got. I went to Votex, you know, Votex in Lancaster. Got a few certifications in computers. Then my first job was I became a CNA. Um, they had this. Um, job hosting they provided training through the American Red Cross I like to work with people and that was one of the things that I that I learned from that career counseling that I that my interests were always to work with people so I said okay so I'm gonna go that direction I went through through that Um, then found out that wasn't the job for me because it was hard for me not to be emotional with my, my patients Um, so from that, I went into banking and I was in banking for a long time. Wow. From from healthcare (laughs) to finance. Yeah. (laughs) There's a jump. Yes. Um, I figured, you know, and with banks, there's a lot of changes. They're always merging. Um, I think the bank that I was in went from Meridian to Core States to First Union to Wells Fargo, and I don't know what they are now. Okay. So we get a little bit of instability again. Uh Uh-huh. Again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm still working part time because back then you had to start part time before you could be offered a full time through the banks. But with all the merges, then they had job freezes. So now I say, okay, you know what? I need to go back to school. So I get a job, a part time job that paid me better and allowed me to start going back to school, which was at FedEx. So what did you go back to school for? I was going to school for business. Okay. Business, uh, well, it was business management. And, but, you know, you have to take all these general classes first. (laughs) Yeah, you do. (laughs) Oh, my God. You know, I had to take all the Englishes and speech and all those general classes. So, and I was doing this, mind you, I'm doing this, I'm I'm working, I'm being a mom. And then at this point, I'm a single mom um, because my, my daughter's dad and I just, you know, were you know, together for only like a, the first year of her life. So now I'm a single mom. I'm going, I'm working and I meet another lady that became like my mother. I used to have an apartment and in the corner there was a little store, uh, like a little grocery store. And sometimes I'd go there to buy diapers and whatnot. This lady and I start talking and she kind of becomes like my mom. So she helps me with my daughter caring for her while I'm working and going to school um I did that for a while um through one of my clients at the bank 
um, he kind of asked where I went and another coworker found me and he offered me a full-time job, which is Lancaster County Magazine. Ah. So I, I always went to, for a better job, you know, to a better job. And, and I was blessed to find these people that actually motivated me, you know, um, when I went into the business there for Lancaster County Magazine, they were still using DOS for their mailing system. So I wanted to, you know, I'm always trying to um, change things or make them better, more efficient. And that's what I like to do. Um, and, and and I started that. And, um, God, I went through so many changes in my life. You know, um, after after that job, I was back in banking. I used to work f as an executive assistant. So now I've become from, you know, receptionist to customer service to admin to now an executive assistant where I'm dealing with all executives. So you you moved yourself up and you really then, you know, you found that stability within that instability that you come from. And I think that that's really the admirable thing. And that's where it has taken you to where you are today yes. to be um you know, in the beauty industry. Uh, and I think that that's really what you've done to your life. I mean, you've made your life beautiful. You know, I, I, r I ran into a, um, a plant pathologist about 20 years ago, and he talked about, he was telling me about uh, certain trees that have shallow roots. And he was saying that, uh, you know, those trees, they were in my yard at the time. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying, you know, the trees that you have in your yard, the, the, those evergreens and the, even those beautiful shade trees, those elms, the, and they have very, very shallow roots, but yet they have, the, but they're able to grow big and strong regardless of that and to provide the beauty, you know, and to give us shade and beauty and, and all those things that we expect from a, from a tree, you know, from a natural mm -hmm. tree. And I, and I almost see that you is in that, is that you had the, you had the shallow roots and yet you were able to use that to be to become who you are the woman that you ha you know and the mother that you have you know that you found these mentors along the way which is our job as women is to now I, s I know that you mentor now your daughters um, and that's exactly what the plan is all about you know that's exactly what storied women is all about yeah and you know I fell kind of like into makeup because I always had an interest my dad was a hairstylist he had his salon so and between that back and forth, you know, when he had his business, I was there all the time. So I remember telling him that I wanted to go to school for cosmetology. And he says, don't do it. It's too much competition. <laughs> but you like that competition. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I just like making people feel good. And I felt that when I did makeup, I made people feel good. Um, and when I was 25 now, I said, let me just go take a course. I can just keep it as a hobby. And it would be a nice break from my, you know, very analytical type of jobs. And it, I'd have something more creative and fun for me. It would be like a hobby. And then my hobby became something else. Yeah. Yeah. But, great but it was hard because now you go from being stable to going into something that's not as stable. So it's, you know, but I love it. So. And you seem to be an expert at that, mastering that. Yeah. So you have a great story. You have a really good story. And I hope that people can really understand that regardless of from whence we came, mm -hmm. we can build that strength. We have that opportunity to take that upon ourselves to be that strong woman that we are. Yeah. It's, you know, and I hear sometimes people say, oh, well, you know, I was destined to have a bad, you know, a bad life because uh, this and that. And I think it's what you make of it. You know, sometimes you need to look at it as that's what you don't want to be and that's what you don't want to do very true and you have built yourself a beautiful life yes i'm thank happy you. thank you very much trish thank you and thank you i'm anna rose and thank you trish thank you for listening for to storied women